Okay, that was unfortunate. Um, what is up, everybody? If you're watching this on YouTube later, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to our channel. We're trying to get those numbers up. And also, if you could just hit the little plus, the thumbs up button, um, it really helps content creators out and get uh, our content on other people's for you page and discovery channels. So please take three seconds to do that if you can. Would really appreciate it. Today we're sitting down to open up and review the two decks in the new Lord of the Rings starter kit. Um, we've done two starter kits prior to this one. The two regular uh, Magic the Gathering ones. This one is themed around Lord of the Rings. But it also came at a bit higher of a price. So the normal starter kits um, that we reviewed prior, this one's a little dusty. Uh, the previous starter kits were, I believe, $15 Canadian, maybe $19 Canadian, depending on if the store really wanted to gouge you. Um, but this one is uh, unfortunately at uh, $25 Canadian now. So if you're in the States, it'll be a little bit cheaper. But if you're in Canada or elsewhere like I am, um, you might pay a little bit more than you would normally expect to pay for a starter kit. Basically, what comes in here is two ready to play decks with sort of soft themes. Uh, Wizards isn't super great at coalescing the two themes for starter kits but it does give you an interesting peek into some kind of standard uh, magic the gathering mechanics i think is more of the point the the fact that these this is a lord of the Rings set means that these are going to be convoluted uh, mechanics and overly complicated because the lord of the rings cards are fairly outside of the norm as far as their mechanics go, uh, how many mechanics a single card has. Um, not a lot of just plain standard stuff in Magic the Gathering's Lord of the Rings set. So I'm assuming that the starter kit is going to be relatively similar. Um, there are a few cards in here that are exclusive to this product which makes this kind of uh, an easy buy for those looking for those cards. It's not that expensive and you get access to some lands and some other cards as well, including these two face cards. So the two decks that are in here are, unfortunately, me as the blue player is not going to be catered to because we're playing, we've got a white green deck, a Selesnya deck and a red black deck a Rakdos deck they are fronted by the two face cards here are Aragorn and Arwen Wed which is a little askew hopefully the card's not too damaged in there and then uh, Saruman the Lidless Eye so we'll open this up uh, the other things you get in here are codes on arena for two sets of these decks uh, to unlock the cards in Arena. Basically, they want you to be able to send a code to your friend and then play these decks against one another. So there's two codes in here. Uh, let's take a look at the back. Um, there's also a magic play guide and then two deck boxes. They use that term very seriously on all of their products, but none of it is ever serious because their deck boxes uh, in these kind of products are just absolute garbage. They're basically like the stuff you get in the um, pre-release kits. That's just a paper box. But actually, the pre-release kit ones are a lot nicer than the ones you get in products like this, or even the commander decks. You pay like upwards of a hundred dollars for a commander deck, and you get like a paper little box that just wouldn't hold up to a sneeze. So. I don't love that they continuously advertise that you get two deck boxes because that is a, a, a loose term in this scenario. Um, but let's open this up and see what's in here. I never know the best way to open this. I suppose just from the side. There's no like... 
This looks like it's trying to tell me to open it in the front, but there's no lip there, so we have to open it from one of the two sides. Um, this is kind of like one of the products I don't display on my shelf. If you see the um, shelf behind me, at the very top shelf of that has like all of my empty bundle boxes and pre-release kits and stuff like that. Just kind of mementos from you know videos I've done or events I've taken part of. Also like magic and its relationship to me. So knowing what that's that I've been a part of, how long I've been playing. Um, so this is just the display box. I'll put that aside for now. Um, in here, you'll see underneath, you'll get our two quote unquote deck boxes. So these build up just like any other normal box. The other difficult thing about these deck boxes is that they hold 60 card decks unsleeved. So if you sleeve your cards, which uh, most people do in our Lord's year of uh, 2023, uh, you can't use these deck boxes. So they're pretty much useless. I use mine. Um, let's see if I have it close at hand here. It does not look like I do. I have one of these from one of the starter kits that we opened, and basically I put my lands in here for pack battles, so I have three of each land. Um, we kind of just take those with us when we go to events, just in case someone wants to throw down with some pack battles. Uh, but these deck boxes are pretty useless. Actually, you might even want to just cut out this really nice kind of cartoon ring on the back and use that as a token. Uh, this this art for the starter kit is not in the set, but this like cool kind of cartoon anime Frodo uh, it was on the front of the box. It's on the front of these deck boxes and there's a similar vibe to the one ring on the back. They did release a card sleeve in arena that's this art and it's, it looks pretty cool okay then here is the only other thing in the box aside from the decks which is the starter kit play guide this is just a really rough rundown of like what's in the box and how to play uh, where to put your cards um, how to start so if you think of like a traditional board game how it has a kind of a quick start guide and then rules explanations. Uh, this is basically that. So it's got basic rundown of turn order, parts of a turn, how to play, and then there's even some FAQs on the back. But actually, I heard someone arguing earlier today about whether they pronounce it FAQ or they say it facts. And I think anyone who says it facts is uh, lying to themselves because it's an abbreviation. So you're supposed to say the letters. It is an FAQ, not a fax. Um, yeah, this is pretty handy. I think that obviously this product is aimed at getting people in the door that have never played a game of Magic before, potentially. Or maybe they you know, have played in previous years and haven't played recently or they've lapsed a little bit in their play um this having this around on the table to answer some easy questions to kind of give a rundown to players that aren't uh familiar with uh the way magic the gathering works this is really strong i like this this is way better than the short info cards that come in some booster packs um you know, this is probably only going to get used on on tables where both players are fairly unfamiliar. I think a lot of Magic the Gathering players um, really adore the act of teaching someone how to play Magic. It's kind of um, kind of an intimate thing. This share one of your favorite. Most people that play Magic don't play it. Um, kind of superficially they get really into it and it's very addicting so it's it's kind of intimate to share one of your greatest hobbies and a large part of your 
fun and personality with someone you know or someone you don't even. Um, so this kind of comes off the front. It's just kind of holding the cards and decks in there. Um, it doesn't look like... Oh, actually, maybe our Aragorn is a little damaged. I'm just going to put this off to the side. So our Aragorn has some weird printing damage on the bottom. I don't know. There it is. It'll pick up in the light there. It doesn't look like it's from the case or being skewed in the case at all. Uh, this card is awesome. Aragorn and Arwen Wed. So this is obviously kind of what the deck is built around. They are four green white for a three six human elf noble legendary creature with vigilance. Uh, whenever Aragorn and Arwen enters the battlefield or attacks, put a one one counter on each other creature you control. You gain one life for each other creature you control. So this is a very powerful card and is obviously kind of the, the headmaster of this deck. You want to go wide with your white green deck and then play Aragorn and Arwen wed and make everyone bigger and more buff. Um, the leader of the Rakdos deck is Sauron, the Lidless Eye. So Sauron is three black red for a 4-4 four, four avatar horror legendary creature. When Sauron enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap it, it gains haste until end of turn. And then you can pay one black red creatures you control get plus two plus oh until end of turn each opponent loses two life so if you have a way to make infinite mana you can just drain them in to death um this is a cool card the art is stunning the foiling on these seems particularly well done not that i've been necessarily disappointed with the foiling in the normal packs or anything but uh that is the headmaster of our Rakdos deck. I think we should just do this one at a time. Kind of get a feel for it. And just kind of judge without playing it, because we obviously don't have anyone to play against. Um, without playing it, kind of decide whether or not these decks are any good. And then maybe we'll punch in the codes on Arena, and we can uh, give these decks a shot. So... I put the garbage off to the side. I'm going to take the arena code off the back because I would like to give it away. Um, so basically, we're just going to go through this one at a time um, and see how the deck comes together. So we have Frodo, Determined Hero, one and a white for a 2 3 or a 2 2, Halfling Warrior, Legendary. Whenever Frodo enters the battlefield or attacks, you may attach target equipment you control with mana value 2 or 3 to Frodo. As long as it's your turn, prevent all damage that would be dealt to Frodo. So he's like indestructible-ish, which isn't too bad. Um, and it looks like you only get one of him, so that sucks. See, that's another thing with the... I know that these decks are trying to kind of share the wealth in a way so that people get a, a taste for different um, Magic the Gathering mechanics, but nobody's building a deck with a single copy of a legendary hero, especially one that their deck is built around. If this deck is built around Aragorn and Arwen, then there's, there should be four copies of it in here. So it's interesting to kind of balance that they don't want to make the decks too powerful, but they're also not building decks that people would ever use in real life uh, for the most part. So it's an interesting kind of balance. Uh, next up, we have Gandalf the White Rider. 3-1 for a 3-3 Avatar Wizard with Vigilance. Whenever you cast a spell, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. Scry 1. When Gandalf dies, you may put it into its owner's library, fifth from the top not bad then we have oh the commander card galadriel gift giver three green green for a four four elf noble when galadriel gift giver enters the battlefield or attacks choose one put a one one counter on target another target creature create a food or create a treasure and we have bilbo's ring three mana for a legendary artifact equipment as long as it's your turn equipped creature has hexproof and can't be blocked Whenever a equipped creature attacks alone, you may draw a card and lose a life. 
and then it costs a little bit less to equip a halfling and four to equip anything else. Not terrible. So now we're getting into the commons and uncommons, which they do provide full playsets of sometimes. So we'll see what's in here. I haven't looked at these deck lists at all. Uh, we have knights, knight of the keep, two and a white for a three, two human knights, zero flavor or just flavor text. And of course they give us three copies of that. Then we have Westfold Rider, one and a white for a three, one human knight. Sacrifice it, destroy target artifact or enchantment, activate only as a sorcery. We only get one of those, which kind of a shame. Uh, then we have Eastmark Cavalier, one and a white for a 2-2 human knight with vigilance. Um, whenever it deals damage to a goblin or orc, destroy that creature. Pretty decent. Only get one of those as well. East Farthing Farmer, two and a white for a 2-3 human peasant. When the farmer enters the battlefield, create a food token. When you do, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, till end of turn for each food you control. That's pretty big. Only one of those as well. Uh, Protector of Gondor says three and a white for a three-three human soldier. Uh, when it en when it enters the battlefield, create a one-one white human soldier creature. And we get uh, two of those. Then we get the. Dune Dane Blade, one and a white for an artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus two, plus one, and it costs one to equip human and three to equip everyone else. Then we get second breakfast, two and a white for an instant. Up to two target creatures each get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Create a food. We get a rosy cotton, two and a white for a one, one halfling, a peasant legendary creature. Uh, when Rosie Cotton enters the battlefield, create a food token. Whenever you create a food token, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control other than Rosie. And we only get one of those as well. Then we get Banishing Light. Um, it's an enchantment. Uh, when it ETBs, exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. And we get two of them. Then we get a Land Revolve Horizon Witness. Four and a white for a 3-4 Bird Noble, legendary creature, uh, with flying. Whenever two or more creatures you control attack a player, target attacking creature without flying gains flying until end of turn. You only get one of Lanaval. Lan Landraval. Then we get You Cannot Pass. One white for an instant destroy target creature that blocked or was blocking or was blocked by a legendary creature this turn. We only get one of those. Mushroom Watchdogs, one green for a 2-2 two -two dog creature. Sacrifice of food, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Mushroom Watchdogs. It gains vigilance until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. We get two of them. Not bad. Those are pretty good cards. Um, Woe's Pathfinder. It's one and a green for a 1-1 one -one human shaman with tap to add one mana of any color. Six and a green tap. Uh, another target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. And we get two of them. Pretty good card. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. My throat's just closing up. Ooh wee uh, Then we got Bag and Porter. Three and a green for a 4-4 four, four dwarf. Whenever Bag and Porter attacks, it gets plus size plus x plus x till end of turn where x is the number of legendary creatures you control so far we've opened three six legendary creatures so potential there only get two of those so far we've only gotten three knights of the keep and two or less of everything else uh, generous ant is a big booty with reach we only get one generous ant uh, many partings is a Ramp spell. Galadrum bow is a nice little bow. A uh, piece of equipment. Mariadoc Brandybuck is a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever one or more halflings you control, attack a player, create a food token. That's pretty good. Peregrine Took. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus an additional food token are created instead. 
Sacrifice three foods. Draw a card. That's pretty good. Stew the conies. Make a food. Butterbury innkeeper. Beginning of your end step. If you don't control the food, create a food. And then we get into the land. So we have uh, two Shire Tariffs. A Grape Hilt Refuge. Two of those. Uh, when these... Oh, these are the Gain Life lands. Okay. And then we have a handful of forests. And a handful of plains. And then we get some food tokens. And a Q card. So it really... Um, you know, based on the idea that Aragorn and Arwen are kind of like a white weenies deck, um, the rest of the deck doesn't really follow suit with that. The rest of the deck is really about halflings and food. I think Gandalf being kind of the odd man out, maybe in that one. Um... Whenever you cast a spell, yeah, Gandalf's a little awkward... Galadriel does foods. Um, and Frodo cares about equipment. And then Bilbo's ring doesn't really matter. So for the majority of this deck, you're looking at a food sub-theme. And it's really weird to me that the rest of the deck isn't designed around that. Um... I also, and I'll repeat it again, like, I'm also not a fan that, um, for some reason, they think that diversity in cards means a better product when all you're doing really is kind of muddying the water. This deck isn't really good at doing anything in particular. We should have gotten a full playset of Second Breakfasts. We should have got a full playset of East Farthing Farmers. Um, instead, like half of the deck cares about creatures and going kind of just going wide. The one card we got a three of is a three, two for three with no abilities, just flavor text. So. It's kind of a bummer. Everything else wants to do the food thing. And it's kind of weird. I mean, Woe's Pathfinder is a good ramp card. I really like this card for ramping. Uh, Mushroom Watchdogs cares about food. That's a really good um, food synergy. Second Breakfast. East Farthing Farmer. Um... Even Generous Ant cares about food. Many Partings is ramp and food generation. And then you've just got this whole stack of like half the deck doesn't care about food. And they could have done something really, really cool here and actually themed it out. It looks like they just, you know, took a handful of ideas or a handful of cards and decided to put them in there. Said, call it a red black or call it a green white deck and uh, ship it whereas this could be really fun if they made kind of sub themes just like the um, the commander decks They're, those are all like sub themes there's a there's a theme going on um, it's very awkward also my ca camera's like glitching or something what is happening what is happening? Is it because I put it on highest FPS and it's just like freaking out? Okay, I mean, let's try that. Now it looks really bright. Let me turn my light down. Alright, that looks fine. 
Um, so kind of a shame. There's some cool cards in here. I think that if if someone were to ask me so far, so far, we're halfway through. If someone were to ask me, should I buy the starter kit? I would say yes. If you're looking to have a couple of casual decks sitting around, yes. Um, would I keep the deck in this specific form? No. I would do a little bit of editing here and there to kind of give it the rest of that food sub-theme that it's looking for. I'd put more uh, farmers in there, put more watchdogs in there. You don't have to like overpower the deck. I would just put more of the cards that you want um, in there. So I would take out all of the stuff that didn't care about food and, and double up on stuff like uh, Butterbur, Rosy Cotton. Um, I'd put a playset of many partings in there. I'd put more second breakfast, more farmers, more watchdogs. You don't even need the um, Pathfinders, but it's always kind of just nice to have a, a clean example of, of mana fixing and mana dorks in like a casual kind of starter deck. So I, I would maybe keep the Pathfinders in there. Um, unfortunately, like Aragorn and Arwen Wed is a really cool card, but this deck just doesn't care about it really. Uh, next up is the Sauron of Sauron the Lidless Eye. So this guy, again, just as a reminder, um, when he ETBs, gain control of something, and then you can pay three to give creatures plus two creatures you control plus two plus O oh, until end of turn and each opponent loses two life I I don't have huge hopes uh, that this deck is going to be super synergistic um, just based off of what we just looked at but I, I could be wrong if we have a cool like sacrifice drain thing going on I think that would play really really well with the Sauron card um They want to do that plus three or that three mana ability as many times as possible so we'll see uh we'll take the arena code off put that off to the side uh, i'll give one of the arena codes away at the end of the video so if you want to continue watching or just skip to the end and try to grab it uh, feel free so this is the sauron deck we get a Golem Scheming Guide who, uh, whenever it attacks, look at the top two cards of your library, put them back in any order, then choose land or non-land. An opponent guesses whether the top card of the library is the chosen kind. Reveal it. If they guessed right, remove Golem from combat. Otherwise, you draw a card and Golem can't be blocked this turn. So an interesting little guessing game. Uh, then we've got the Witch King uh, Bringer of Ruin. Uh, whenever it attacks, defending player sacrifices a creature with the least power among creatures they control. Pretty powerful. This is why I was really excited about this deck. Then we've got Fires of Mount Doom. When Fires of Mount Doom enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to target creature an opponent controls. Destroy all equipment attached to that creature. That's pretty big. Two and a red, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. When you do play a card this way, Fires of Mount Doom deals two damage to each player. So even yourself. And we've got the Balrog Flame of Undun. Undoing. Uh, trample when legendary creature and opponent controls dies. Put the Balrog of Udin on the bottom of its owner's library. So once the Balrog kills Gandalf, he goes away. And then we've got our commons. Goblin Assailant is our, I'm assuming, three of with no abilities. Uh, Easterling Vanguard amasses orcs. We get two of them. Feed the Swarm is a pretty decent uh, removal spell. Oh, we get two of them. Nice. Uh, Dunlin Grabain uh, amass orcs too. Trebuchet makes um, flying rocks when it attacks alongside or when an orc or goblin attacks snarling warg 
uh, gets plus one plus zero oh if you control an orc or a goblin, and it has menace, so kind of okay. Shelob's ambush is a nice little combat trick. Creates a food token. Nasty end is a good card draw and sacrifice outlet. Gothmog gives all of your creatures death touch or all of your tokens death touch. Pretty fun card, to be honest. Fell Beast uh, forces your opponent to sacrifice something. Huge mana cost, though. Uh, more of a limited bomb a game changer than a constructed game changer. Swarming of Moria creates a treasure and amasses orcs too. Olakai Crusher uh, can't block unless you control a goblin or orc, so it has to be with a friend. Oliphants are, are great. Um, gives another creature a plus two plus oh buff if they attack together, but it also has mountain cycling, so you can find those mountains. Um, you only get one of them, of course, because it's a decent card. Uh, cast into fire is an instant. It deals one damage to each of up to two target creatures or exile target artifact. Fires of Orthanc destroy target artifact or land. Creatures without flying can't block this turn. Goblin Fire Leaper has fire breathing, and then when it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or opponent controls. So this is something that when your opponent targets it, you um, use its fire breathing mechanic as many times as you can afford so that it does more damage than expected. We've got a uh, Grishnok Brash in Instigator. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, a mass orcs too. When you do, until end of turn, gain control of target non-legendary creature and opponent controls with power less than or equal to the amassed army's power. Untap that creature, it gains haste. So more creature stealing. That's a little synergy. Foray of Orcs uh, deals X damage um, where X is the amassed Orcs power and it amasses Orcs too. That's a pretty good card, actually. Then we have a Mauher Uruk High Captain, a legendary Orc soldier with menace. If one or more 1 1 counters would be put on an army or goblin, army, goblin, or orc, you control that many plus 1 1 1 counters are put on it instead. So this guy just gives you extra buff on your orc armies and counters. And then we've got Ugluk of the White Hand. Whenever another creature you control dies, put a 1 1 counter on Ugluk. If that creature was a goblin or orc, put two 1-1 one -one counters on him instead. Pretty good. And then we've got a Mind Stone. Uh, nice little mana fixer. Sacrifice it to draw a card. We've got some cool Evolving Wilds. Four Evolving Wilds. Sheesh, why do you need four? It's a two-color deck. And then basic mountains, basic swamps, and... Oh, see, there we go. That's what the trebuchet makes, is these little guys. These little flying boulders. Um, yeah, so... Looking at this setup... It's mostly just an amass orcs deck. Um, which I suppose, like, give or take, is sort of relevant to Sauron... Um, I think that much like the food deck, you're looking at um, that doesn't matter. These matter. Uh, those don't matter. Those don't matter. That doesn't matter. Those don't matter. The mass orcs. Cares about orcs, mass orcs. Good removal, mass orcs. Pointless. Uh, there's a couple of other things that care about orcs. Cares about orcs. Uh, Crusher cares about orcs. And then we've got a few of these guys ca uh, care. So Ugluk is really good. Uh, Uruk High Captain's very good. Instigator amasses orcs naturally, so that's also good. Gothmog makes all of your tokens have death touch, so that's also very strong. Um, 
Balrog doesn't matter. Fires of Mount Doom don't matter. Uh, Witch King doesn't matter. And Gollum doesn't matter. So out of the five legendary creatures in this deck, four of them care about what the majority of the deck is trying to do. Um, and that seems about par with the last one. So with the food token, the food deck, um, you know, there was roughly a third of the deck that didn't make any sense. Wasn't trying to do anything with the rest of the mechanics. Wasn't trying to evolve it in any way. Um, so I think that they're about par in that regard. But it's kind of a, a letdown, all things considered, because, you know, you've got potentially a few bucks invested into these, and they're, they're more of a money sink than uh, you might desire. I think that plenty of people are going to be stoked to, to buy these but aren't going to be stoked to learn that in order to make them sort of decent, fun decks, you have to upgrade them uh, or convince them to lean in the direction that they're trying to lean in naturally. And I think that that's quite a bummer. Um, I'm not sure... Obviously, Wizards wants to make money, right? But I'm not sure... The idea behind getting people stoked on something like this without considering you know, maybe doing it well without considering just making two decent starter decks um, I, and I, I'm not in those boardrooms either so like I don't know what conversations are going on um, at this point, Wizards of the Coast has like very little equity in people's trust, especially when it comes to de decision making, product design. Um, I think Lord of the Rings as a set has earned a lot of that trust back, some of that trust back. People are very high on uh, magic right now because this new set is very fun. It's also like an uh, auxiliary set, so it's not super important either um, which I guess kind of skews the way people judge things right um, but I'm not in those boardrooms so I don't know what their gross intention is with these starter kits I assume it's to get people interested in magic to give them the widest berth of game intricacies that they can without bogging them down uh, but I don't understand why they couldn't just make four or five different starter kits and have more refined deck mechanics, deck archetypes. Um, I think that they're missing out on some really critical things because pe people want to, to play decks that are strong, that work well together to synergize. Otherwise, you're just kind of doing things without affecting your board or affecting your opponent's board. Um, so there, there might be a small intention in the boardroom to be like, let's give them something to build off of. Uh, it, they definitely don't position the product like that. They definitely position it, it as two good decks that you can play against each other that aren't trying to do the same thing, which is true. But uh, other than the few chase cards that are in this set, the two decks themselves need a lot of work before they're you know, fun to play on paper. Like, it's not fun to just do whatever the next card you pull up it says to do. It's fun to have synergy and, like, have an archetype and aim, understand what you're trying to do before you sit down or before you shuffle up and then try to do that thing better than your opponent could do their thing. Um, and these two decks with their mishmash of legendaries and archetypes and goals um, 
it's going to be very difficult to do that unless you, again, take half of these pieces out and put in a more refined idea of what this deck should be. Given the fact that a lot of the things you could want to double up on or quadruple up on in here, um, not a lot of these cards are very expensive. So even at $25 Canadian, I would suggest buying the um, starter kits. I think that this gives you uh, land and a few auxiliary creatures and some spells. And really all you need to do is take out, you know, eight to 10 cards and buy a couple more cards to fill in the spots. You want to double quadruple up on some things like I keep saying. Um, so I think if you split 25 into two to judge how much each of these decks are worth, uh, you're looking at $12.50. I think that you could easily make these decks fun and playable for under $20 each, including the price of the starter kit. So um, with just like eight more bucks, uh, you can make these decks really, really fun. And I suggest having a few casual, people use that word all the time, um, casual, not competitive decks, just ready to go. Um, I have a few. I never get to play them because I, most of the people I have over or go to to play Magic with um, also have competitive decks. So I'm not playing the casual stuff very often, but it's never a bad thing to have two casual decks just waiting and ready to go. Um, so this is a one thumb up, uh, one thumb sideways review of the newest Magic the Gathering starter kit uh, featuring the Lord of the Rings, Tales of Middle Earth. Um, I would say pick one up. Pick one up, try to make these decks a little bit better and, and sleeve them up. Don't put them in these shitty deck boxes. Actually put them in some real deck boxes and throw them in your drawer and have them in your game space so that if anyone wants to try magic or anyone wants to give the new Lord of the Rings stuff a shot that doesn't have any of it uh, you can just pull out these two uh, sort of pre-made decks and um, have some fun otherwise thank you so much for being here I'm going to show off one of the arena codes in a minute uh, but while you're here it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe I know I keep harping on it but we're trying to get that number up um, and if you can take a few seconds to hit like or even write in the comments below what you think of these two decks because any of that engagement really helps us out and I love hearing from you guys I love talking about this stuff I like discussing magic and, and hyping people up and I like hearing people's opinions so please feel free to share that with me uh, for those of you that are sticking around um, we'll see you in a minute but for right now I will talk to you guys on the next one <laughs>